The Indians did not stand pat after being no hit by the Angels Wednesday. The Tribe traded for an outfield bat, and the rumor mill says they're still looking to bolster the lineup and the starting rotation. The first order of business is a win tonight, and the Indians will try to go 8-2 and two versus the Royals this year next on Sportsline Ohio. And from Progressive Field in downtown Cleveland, Ohio, we welcome you into Cleveland Indians baseball as the Tribe gets ready to open up a three-game series against the Kansas City Royals, and it will be a new-look Indians lineup here this evening. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Tribe was off yesterday, but they were busy, especially in the front office, as they swing a deal to acquire a new outfielder, a bat for the lineup. Kosuke Fukudome comes over from the Chicago Cubs. Now, he is another left-handed hitter, but Ricky's a very patient hitter from what we understand. Well, he's a, a line drive hitter. He's, he's got a short stroke, and he hits the ball to all fields like a lot of the Japanese hitters. He's not going to come in and hit home runs. Don't expect that. But he can also play some defense. He's got a very good arm out in right field, something that will move Michael Brantley to center. So I like the move they made because they're going to have to do something because on this homestand, they have really struggled. One and four, that game they won, they had to score two runs in the ninth inning to win it. They've only scored seven runs. They were no hit in their last ball game. So they have a long way to go to, to get back into the swing of things. And from what we hear, the Indians are still working to try and acquire perhaps another player uh, to help this club because, again, with all the struggles they've been through, and they're only two games above the break-even mark, but just a game and a half out of first place as we near the end of the month of July. All right, looking at our pitching matchup tonight, Carlos Carrasco going to the Tribe against the Royals team the Indians have played well against. They've won seven of nine head-to-head -head so far this year against Kansas City, and our pitching matchup brought to you by Ram Trucks, designed, tested, and proven to be the best trucks we've ever built. Ram. Well, Jeff Francis had a really tough start against the Indians back April 27th, went three innings, gave up ten hits and five earned runs, and, uh, you know, he's lost his last five decisions. Going up against Carlos Carrasco, a guy that hasn't won a game in the month of July and doesn't pitch very well in his home park. He is 2-5 and five and an ERA of over six, so he's got to settle down. He's given up a home run in six straight starts, but Carlos is going to have to go out there, put none up on the board, and hopefully that offense can turn it around and score for him early. And again, the Indians have played well against Kansas City, but they haven't seen the Royals since the middle of the month of May. We'll be back with play-by-play -play action coming up between the Indians and the Royals right here on Sports Time Ohio. Well, a beautiful night in downtown Cleveland as the Indians host the Royals in the first of three this weekend. Tribe has taken the field. Fans still filing in on this Friday night. And Carlos Carrasco on the hill looking for his ninth win of the season for the Indians. While he heats up, let's look at Ned Yost's starting lineup for KC. Alex Gordon having a fantastic season in the leadoff spot, followed by Melky Cabrera and then Billy Butler, who's homered in three straight. Eric Hosmer, Jeff Francoeur, and Mike Moustakis in the middle. Brian Pena, Chris Getz, and Alcides Escobar rounded out. 
Carlos Carrasco making his 20th start this year. Carlos looking for a win in the month of July. He is 0-4. He is 8-8 on the season uh, with a 114 innings and one-third pitch, 114 hits given up. He's given up homers in six straight starts, so he's going to try and keep the ball in the yard. He is 1-0 against the Kansas City Royals this year, 2-1 in his career. His first game was a no decision, but back on May 17th, it was a 7-3 win. He went five and a third innings, gave up five hits. Let's take a look at the Indians' defense brought to you by Pat O'Brien Chevrolet, saluting the men and women defending our country and watching on the Armed Forces Network. Kearns is in left, Brantley is in center, and Fukudome making his very first start in right field. Hanahan at third, as Drupal at short. Orlando at second, Santana at first, with Marson behind the plate. Scott Barry will call the balls and strikes. Laz Diaz at first, Wally Bell at second, John Hirschbeck, the crew chief, is down at third. Alex Gordon steps in to get us underway. A 298 average, a dozen homers. He's driven in 54. And that's just the start of things. Well, earlier in the year, he was hitting in that number three hole. When we face him now, he's back up in the leadoff spot. But having a nice season out in left field, both offensively and defensively. In the air, center field. Routine play here for Michael Brantley. And one out here in the first. Take a look at our injury report tonight. Brady Sizemore, of course, Mitch Talbot. Mentioned in our open, I think it was in the open, uh, might have been in our pregame segment, I can't recall. But Shinsu Chu, <laughs> I talked to him today, and uh, he said he's really pretty sure that he's going to be back. I said, are you, are you really in the middle of August? He said, Watch, just watch. So I like it. I like the fact that he's he's feeling well, good. Obviously, it he's feeling confident. It wouldn't surprise me because we remember last year when we thought he was going to be out for some time with that jam thumb. He was back in no time at all. It gets by Santana. It looked like it ticked off the end of his glove, and Melky Cabrera has a one-out single. Well, there is Shinsu Chu out doing a little cardio work before the ball game today. But as you said, the, the, the thing for Chu is that he still has to get over the hurdle of, you know. Missing a couple of months. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's one thing to get the thumb feeling 100%, gripping the bat, swinging the bat, getting jammed, fouling a ball off the end, throwing a ball, all those things. But then there's the timing issue. Well, that's that's the biggest thing. I can see him doing it, getting in shape and getting ready. It's a matter of catching up to these guys that have been playing every day for the two months he was out. Billy Butler on a home run binge. He's homered in three straight games for Kansas City. Now, Butler's uh, one of those guys that the home runs come because of a good quality at bat that he puts on the ball. He is strong enough. He stays on the ball, goes to right center field as well as anybody. Makes him a high average hitter. Takes a strike, hit the knees. It's 2-1. and one. Butler went 9 for 19 with two doubles, three homers, eight driven in in their four-game series against the Red Sox. Bounced yeah. foul. Kansas City went into Boston uh, and held their own. They won two out of the four games before coming here. They had a day game yesterday, and it's exactly what the Indians are going to do after this series here. They'll have to make their way to Boston for a four-game series, and if you go in there for a split, I think that's a pretty good job. They ended up beating Josh Beckett, who, which they've never done before in the past.
The 2 2. And Butler hammers that deep to left. It is up. It is gone. And Billy Butler is now homered in four straight games. And Kansas City is out to a 2 to nothing lead. Well, that's what cost Carlos Carrasco in his last start was a three, uh, three run homer to Carlos Quinton. That came in the fifth inning. He gives up a two run homer to Billy Butler here in the first inning. And that's seven straight games. He's allowed a home run. Let's uh, look at our Time Warner Cable uh, pitch tracker. And you're going to see a hanging slider. You see where Marson's sitting, and you see where the pitch is. Up, those things get hit a long way. He didn't miss it, and he's been swinging a hot bat, as you mentioned. So Kansas City will take an early 2 nothing lead. And now Eric Hosmer, one of their prized young prospects who's come up and made a real splash for Kansas City. Both with his bat and with his glove. And he smokes one to deep center field. And that's going to one hop the bullpen. And Eric Hosmer rolls into second base with his 17th double of the year. This Royals team can swing the bats. And they have come out swinging here in the first. Well, that is their 200th double of the year. They are thir uh, third in the league in that department, fourth in average. And this young man has uh, really solidified this ball club, as you said, both offensively and defensively. Another pitch up in the zone. Carlos better concentrate on getting the ball down because they are making him pay early. Ten game hitting streak for Eric Hosmer. And now Jeff Francoeur. Veteran right fielder. His name has been dangled out there in the trade rumor mill. Looks at a strike. He's homered 13 times. He's driven in 61. To go along with 28 doubles. Carrasco deals. And it's down low one and one. Way wide of the mark, and Lou Marson is going to go out for a chat. Carrasco falling behind. Yeah. Normally, Marson doesn't like to go to the mound. He likes to stay back there and let that guy settle in. But right now, he sees Carrasco is struggling. After three straight hits, he's trying to go out and settle him down. Lou doesn't like to do that. He normally sits behind the plate, but that saves that guy a, a trip to the mound right there. You don't, as a pitching coach, want to go out in that first inning. You've given up a couple of runs, but what he, what Marson doesn't want him to do is let this inning get away from him and turn it into a big first inning for KC. Carrasco's 2-1. Down low, three balls and a strike. Yeah, concentrate on locating that fastball. And then you work in your breaking stuff. Well, especially the way this team has played offensively at home, you don't want to fall behind too much early in a ball game. He scored seven runs on this homestand. 3-1 pitch. Jammed him back over the screen. Full count. Now the Royals are, are a confident bunch right now. They're playing good baseball. I mean, they're coming off a big win over Josh Beckett yesterday in Boston, who they'd never beaten before. They... Have a lot of young players, and I think they relish the role of playing spoiler right now. 3 2 pitch. Well, it's just a matter that they have a couple of young kids, their draft picks that are fitting in, getting an opportunity, and they have guys that want to play. You know, they're not going to give up under Ned Yost. I can guarantee no. you that. They're going to go out there, they're going to play it out, and they're going to play the full 162. Mike Moustakas, left-handed hitter, waits on deck. Carlos with the payoff pitch. And it's low, ball four. So four straight have reached for Kansas City after Carrasco retired the first batter of the game. 
And Mike Moustakis, another young player for Kansas City. Getting his first taste of big league baseball, Mike Moustakis. Hitting just 201. Well, another first round pick, though, and he's going to get every opportunity to play every day. He is their future, so they're not worried about his offensive numbers right now. They know he'll come and get, a, you know, given the opportunity. He's going to play third base, Hosmer at first base. That's the that's the franchise, the, the future. And, Rick, it's got to be a little comforting for a young player to know you're going to play every day, and as long as you take care of your defense, right. the manager's not going to be up your backside looking to take you out of the lineup every other day. Well, that's what it always is at the big league level. You know, you can play well and you're a high-round draft pick in the minor leagues, but when you get here, you have to separate your offense from your defense. If you're not hitting the ball, you better pick it well and do the little things to win ball games, especially when you're part of the future. He doesn't have to worry about going four for four or two for four every day, or if he goes over four, he's going to be in that lineup every day. That's consoling to, for a young kid. Two-strike pitch. Swung on, and did he get a piece of it? No. No, he did not. He strikes him out, two down. Well, you got to go chase after a bad one out of the zone, and that's another uh, a slider that was not a very good one. You Just, know, that when, yeah, when it was upstairs. You don't see Lou Marston or many catchers drop a ball right in the square of the mitt. That's why I thought maybe at first he got a piece of it, but... With two down, Brian Pena, switch hitter and catcher, steps in with two aboard. And it's outside ball one. Carrasco on the year has really had no problems in the first inning. The second and fourth innings have been his trouble spots on the season. But the Royals touching him for two here in the first. He and just, that pitch evens the count. He just hasn't pitched very well in this ballpark this year. This is his 10th start. He's 3-6. and six. He has an ERA of over 6 in this ballpark. He's been a totally different animal away from progressive field. He's 5-2 and two with an ERA of 2-7. It's, it's half of what it is. Yeah. It's hard to believe. I mean, because this is a legitimate ballpark to pitch in. Josh Tomlin, I mean, he just lost his uh, second game here. He's been great here. He's seven and two this year, and twelve and three in his career. Sometimes there might be a reason for those things, and sometimes they they vary year to year right. too. Right, that's true. Well, that is true because his first start, you remember, was the second one of the year from the White Sox, and they put a hurting on him early. Man. Hey, but you know, yeah. I mean, that's just one start, and you you have to let it go and forget about it. He's one pitch away from getting out of further trouble here in the first inning. And it'll be pitch number 25. Bouncing ball up the middle. Orlando Cabrera with a flip to his dribble Cabrera, and the inning is over. But the Royals strike first with a two-run shot off the bat of Billy Butler. Indians coming to bat when we come back.
Take a look at Manny Actis starting nine tonight. And it's brought to you courtesy of Progressive Insurance, proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Michael Brantley leading it off, then it says Dribble Cabrera and Travis Hafner. Carlos Santana bats cleanup, then Orlando Cabrera and the new Indians edition Kosuke Fukudome. Austin Kearns, Jack Hanahan, and Lou Marson round it out. And Jeff Francis on the mound, making his 22nd start, a 3 and 11 record, and a 4 6 5 ERA. A guy that's he's not going to walk you. He is uh, about third in the league in uh, walks per nine innings. He only has 25, but you stay on him. Use the whole field. Hit it where it's pitched, and you should have some success against him. Do you think there's any hangover effect after being no hit in the game? No. There's Especially once whatsoever. you had an yeah, off day. Well, you had an off day, but, man, you're going to be chomping at the bit to start swinging the bat. Brantley with a bouncing ball to first. Hosmer scoops it up, beats him to the bag, one away. Let's take a look at the Home Depot Kansas City Royals uh, defensive lineup. In the outfield, it's Gordon Cabrera and Frank Kaur. On the infield, it's Mustakas, Escobar, Getz, and Hosmer. And Pena is behind the plate. They are rated sixth in the league. They've made 65 errors. And that guy at first base has really picked up the infield defense for this ball club in Kansas City. They were one of the worst fielding teams earlier in the year when we first played them. But they have picked up their pace where the Indians are going the opposite direction. As Drupal Cabrera shoots one out of play, trying to stop an 0 for 10 streak at the plate. One and one to kill. Francis deals and as Drupal fights it off. Now the one two. Sales high. Key count evens up at two and two now. Francis has really struggled away from Kauffman Stadium in particular. Talked about Carrasco and how he has struggled at home. Francis He's one and six on the yeah. road with a six point one one ERA. About the same. You're right. As far as the ERA goes, he's given up eight homers. But this is a guy you don't want to try and hit a homer off of. You want to just try and get jammed by him because he's going to throw it slower, you know, and he's going to pinpoint it, get you to swing at his pitch is what he wants you to do. His worst start of the year as a Royal really came against the Indians earlier this season. Ten hits in the three innings that he pitched. And he is one and two in his career. 0-1 this year. But he's also had, you know, some bad luck, too. I mean, he had back-to-back -back starts earlier this month against Detroit and Minnesota. Gave up two runs in each start, or Chicago and Detroit, rather. Two pretty good hitting veteran lineups in Chicago and then home against Detroit. He gave up two runs in each of those start. One a no decision, one a loss in six innings of work both times. Nine pitch at bat coming up right here for his dribble Cabrera. And a 3 2, he popped him up. On the infield. Alcides Escobar has that two down. Three two pitch, and this is what I'm talking about. When you get into that count, that's a changeup. You see where he was fooled. And that's what he will do. He'll try and get hitters hitting off the front foot, take the sting out of the bat. He did it right there. Travis Hafner looks at a strike at the knees. Bronk, a 307 hitter for the year. Nine homers, 41 driven in. And looks at a ball down low. One and one. Wow. 
And a bouncer to first. Hosmer takes it himself. And the Indians go 1-2-3. Two, 2-0 two Kansas City after one. McDonald's, the mango pineapple real fruit smoothie has arrived. By your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. And by AT&T. Two nothing Kansas City. Moving to the second inning. Chris Getz, Alcides Escobar, and Alex Gordon do for the Royals. Gets a 256 hitter on the year for Kansas City. And a ground ball towards second. Orlando Cabrera will take care of that one away. Well, our great clip of the game comes to you courtesy of Wednesday's afternoon affair here at Progressive Field. It wasn't a great clip. If you were watching it from the Indians point of view, but certainly you have to tip your cap to Urban Santana who fired a no hitter for the Angels. Yeah. They saw about as good as pitching as you could see in a three game series. I got to tell you that when you saw Weaver and Heron that started the game, they, they, they were brilliant, those guys. And they've been on quite a roll. You kind of had a, a thought going into that last game, well, you can't see any better pitching than you've seen in the first two games and of the series, what? and yet you did. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and, and you know the funny thing of it is, Matt, they still had a chance at the bottom of the ninth yeah. inning to win that game, and, and you were no hit. So uh, you figure that one out. And five errors on the game, was uh, that was terrible. Five errors and a pass ball. That certainly didn't help. The 2-0. Three balls, no strikes to Escobar. And Carrasco fires a strike. This is a guy that came over in that Zach Granke trade that they knew it was going to take a while to hit a little bit, but he can pick it at shortstop. And they figured, you know, they'll live with that, with that defense until, um, you know, he gets that opportunity and hopefully some of the guys around him can pick him up uh, offensively. Now Carrasco with the payoff pitch. And Escobar yanks it to center on the dead run. Brantley able to run it down over the shoulder, grab two away.
Our minor league report tonight brought to you by Kia. Justin Germano with a perfect game Tuesday for the Clippers in Syracuse. 95 pitches, 69 of those were strikes. First perfect game in Clippers history. You know, I don't care what league you pitch in or where you go. You pitch a perfect game, man. That is tough to do. Congratulations to Justin Germano. Alex Gordon just teed off and launches that into the seats. Second home run allowed by Carrasco. That's the 13th hit this year for Gordon, and it's 3 to nothing, Kansas City. They've waited a while for Alex Gordon to come around, and he is finally producing in a big way this year for KC. 55 runs batted in on the year. Well, this is a heater. First one was a breaking ball. There's right down Broadway. Down Central. His location has not been very good to this point. And the good hitters are jumping on it. So Gordon hits his 13th. And it makes it a 3 nothing ball game. Melky Cabrera base hit his first time up. Looks at a ball down low. Popped him up left field. In comes Austin Kearns. And the inning is over. But the Royals, using the long ball, are out to a 3 nothing lead. Nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the second here at Progressive Field. Something Jeff Francis has not been accustomed to since June 1st. The Royals have averaged less than three runs per game in support. Well, we have witnessed that on our own with a few of the pitchers on the tribes uh, staff. You. We saw Masterson go through 11 starts without getting much run support. And as a pitcher, I guess that's totally out of your control. Your job is you go out there and you just try and keep your team in a game. You can't control how many runs you're going to score. What you do, you can control how many you try and give up. Two and two, the count. Santana out in front, much like his Drupal Cabrera was in his first inning at bat. And now a fly ball to left. Routine there for Gordon. One away. Tonight's trivia question is brought to you by AT&T. The Royals all-time leader in wins and innings pitched. 
We'll have the answer coming up later in the game. Right now, Orlando Cabrera steps in. And Jeff Francis is in a pretty good early game rhythm. Remember in that first start against the Indians, probably had something to do with the fact that he was giving up so many hits. But he was really taking a lot of time, very deliberate. He's getting the ball. He's rocking into the lineup, and he's delivering it here tonight. Well, when you're a guy like he is, a you know, pitch-to-contact type of guy, those you have to work like that. Josh Tomlin, those guys grab the ball. Let's go. Let's get after You want that hitter staying in the batter's box, swinging the bat. You don't give him much time to think, and he can put the ball, you know, located in and out. The more time I think a pitcher takes when you're like that, the tougher it is. The defense, you get him on your heels. He needs good defense behind him because they're going to put it in play. He's not going to strike out a lot of guys, and he's not going to walk a lot of guys. Look at this. Time was called. Well, you know what? Uh, yeah, but Francis, Francis started walking, and, and Cabrera was looking down at his feet. But Scott Berry didn't have his hand up to let the pitcher know. And that's why he continued. I mean, he was looking. Look at he's looking down. He didn't have to give him time right there. No, he had he had already signaled time, and oh, Francis okay. apparently didn't see it. I got you. And a line drive base hit in the left field for Orlando Cabrera. The Indians have their first hit, and now the newest Cleveland Indian, Kosuke Fukudome, will make his Indians debut. They put a little stall tactic on him. And they get the first hit under a diving Mike Moustakis. <laughs> Kosuke Fukudome, for those of you unaware, came from the Chicago Cubs and in exchange for a couple of minor league prospects. Spent nine years playing professional baseball in Japan in their central league. Before coming to the Chicago Cubs, where he has spent the last four seasons. He is 34 years old, a patient hitter with a high on base percentage. You know, when you see him up there with that stance, you think Matsui. You know, when he goes up, you see where the bat angle is and where his arms are, and he, he, he keeps him. Like that, he's 34 years old. Now the 0-2. A little bit low. Two-time batting champ while in Japan. Breaking ball got him. Two down here in the second. First strikeout for Francis. And that is something that I think any player, I don't know if they worry about it, but it, it's an adjustment when you come to the other league and he hasn't faced a lot of these pitchers. Well, what it is, it's new. Um, this is a big slow hook and a good pitch by Francis. And when you're ahead in the count, I mean, that ball was like just barely over the speed limit. It was 66. I mean, you still look at it and you may not know the pitchers. And it may take you a little while, but you want to jump on those fastballs if you get them early and hit them. Austin Kearns looks at a ball down low. And a liner to short, and that'll end the inning. Escobar snares the liner off the bat of Kearns, and through two, it's Kansas City three, Cleveland nothing.
remind you to stay tuned later in the game to see our Miller taste greatness moment. Royals out to a 3 0 lead. Billy Butler, Eric Hosmer, and Jeff Francoeur coming to bat for KC here in inning number three. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning, and we're joined now by Indians general manager Chris Antonetti, who authored his first trade yesterday. At right, you know, and I think you're on about the sixth or seventh hole probably during the Indians golf outing. I actually uh, had to bail on the on the golf outing <laughs> to get it done. So uh, I was showed up there in the morning, uh, visited with some people, and then came back to the office and get some work done. And uh, how quickly did this uh, deal for Fukudome come together? We've actually been working on it for a while. We've talked about it for the last few weeks. There were some complexities that we needed to work through with it, including you know getting him the wave of no trade provision here. So, and then finally aligning on the right value with the Cubs. And you know we're fortunate we were able to get it done uh, yesterday. Bouncing ball to short is Dribble Cabrera. One pitch, one out yeah. here in a third. Explain to some of the fans out there that, you know, say, hey, we need this, we want this, and let's get this, period. <laughs> I wish it was how, that Yeah, easy. I was yeah. going to say, how difficult <laughs> is it to trade nowadays and the, the lines of communication you have to go through and exactly what you have to do to make it happen? Yeah, it, it is difficult. I mean, not only dealing directly with teams, but in some cases, like Coast Case case, there's no trade provisions you need to work through, and we had that issue with a number of players, actually, during this trade season. But I would say for every 100 trades that are discussed, maybe one gets made something along those that lines. Is a, so, I mean, you are open on are your hundreds, phone all day and emailing and texting all day long. Hundreds and hundreds of calls, phone calls, or uh, emails, text messages. So, The word that you're hearing as far as the, the reports that are out there is that, you know, teams are, are less than willing to trade away their prospects, maybe this year, uh, than more so than in years past. Are you hearing that, or, or is that some of the consensus that you're getting i think teams have placed a premium on young players and that they uh, have valued them more maybe now more so now than they have in the past but um there there will be teams out there that are willing to part with them and i think we'll see some deals get done here over the next few days well when you have a lot of teams that are still involved the, the wild card makes a big difference where teams feel they have that opportunity but i mean in in the indian situation there's not one guy that's going to get this team over the hump or take you to the promised land so i mean you have to stick with your game plan don't you for the we most do. part yeah, th there's no one guy that's going to be a magic solution i think we need collectively all the guys that are here to play just to their abilities and if they do that you know we feel talent we feel like we have a talented roster it's still a young roster so hopefully they benefited from the experience in the first half and are better better for it in the second half well, that's what I'm thinking. They're probably a year ahead of schedule compared to where they're supposed to be. No one expected them to be this close this year. I mean, you know, they, that people were talking, oh, maybe 500 or something like that, right. where we're game and a half out of first place, and we're going into the month of August. Right. I think we had higher expectations maybe internally than others did externally. Right. But uh, it is with that with that young of a roster. As much as you like the talent, there's just so much volatility with it, and you don't really know what to expect. But by and large, the guys have come up here and done a good job of competing, and I think some of the other veterans around the club have done a good job of leading the way. Big bouncer towards third. Jack Hanahan on the move. Goes to second. They get the force out there. And Frank Core at first on the fielder's choice. Two down now for Mike Moustakis. Well, I think you made the comment yesterday that you're still looking. Uh, any way that you can to improve the club. Um, I know you, you probably hate putting a percentage on it, but is there a likelihood you, that something will come together, or can you even speculate that far? It's really hard to put probabilities on it. So just when you think you're making progress towards something, the rug could Falls be pulled apart, out from underneath yeah. you. So it's really hard to, to say that. I can tell you we've been very active, and we've had a lot of conversations. We probably have 13 or 14 balls in the air at the moment, but uh, involving different things and different scenarios. So now, whether or not we'll end up getting something done is tough to say. But we're working at it, and we're open-minded and trying to be as creative as we can. You guys seem to set the benchmark, uh, benchmark years ago with the, you know, the, the trade of Bartolo Colon to Montreal, the boatload of prospects you got in return. You think about what Texas did with Teixeira and the prospects that they got in return. That's a fair ball, and that's going to end the inning. So. That's the shortest time I've ever been up here when we've pitched. <laughs> well, that's great. Nice hey, your Thank phone's, you, guys. Your phone's <laughs> ringing. You better answer it. Thanks, Good luck. Appreciate Thanks for stopping it. by. Thank you. Indian General Manager Chris Antonetti.
All right, back here, bottom of the third, Jack Hanahan, Lou Marson, and Michael Brantley do for the Tribe. And Hanahan looks at a ball outside. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, that was called a strike. Looked like it was outside. Just did catch the corner, though, says Scott Berry, the home plate umpire. And Hanahan shoots that back. It's 0-2. Yeah, those guys now, like he says, it's nonstop when you're trying to work and trying to get something done and every club is coming after your best player or players. That's why every everything can be wide open. You know, and he, he said like he told us in between innings about that size more deal. Just well, yeah, we, he didn't get a chance to talk about it on air, but there were unique circumstances surrounding that Bartolo Colon trade to Montreal. The Expos were about to be contracted at that right. time. No one knew what the future was going to be. Omar Minaya was the general manager, and he was just trying to save his job, trying to keep the Expos out there on the front page. So that enabled them to, you know, pull off that trade. Plus, the Indians paid all of Cologne's salary, enabling them to get top prospects. And, and those kind of scenarios are not as frequent this time around. But he did say the, the Texas Rangers did a tremendous job when they dealt to share in getting back the kind of prospects they did from Atlanta. Feliz, uh, Elvis Andrus, and Harrison, the left-handed starter. And Salt to Lamaki. Popped him up. One down here in the third. Let's check in for the first time tonight with Katie Witham. Well, Matt, Rick, we have the award-winning Rock and Blast going on tonight. Don't worry if you're missing out on it. We have an encore performance of it tomorrow night, the best fireworks show of the season, Light Scoreboard Classic Rock and Roll. You can get tickets for as low as $8. Check it out now at Indians.com, guys. Well, they love it. They love the Rock and Blast. we got a nice crowd in the house tonight. And there will be a replay tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Back-to-back -back fireworks nights. The rally alley was hopping today, too. As a matter of fact, out there, seeing the people with the long legs and the jugglers. What, what, is, what do they technically call the people with the stilts, the long legs, as you refer to them? The, the daddy long legs. Stilt I don't walkers? know. I, yeah, I guess. <laughs> there was one out there, a girl walking. Is there, there, was, was there a proper carnival term? Ask Coach. He would know. He's the regular at the Kearneys. Lou Marson strikes out looking, and Jeff Francis making it look easy here so far tonight. He's given up one hit. And then there are two down here in the third. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Michael Brantley takes a strike. Brantley, a bouncer to first base, his first time up. Brantley cuts and misses, and it's one and two. Well, this is the guy you have to wait on. Right there, Michael pulled his head a little bit on that swing. But this guy gives you slow and slower. Don't expect him to blow you away. And a line drive down the left field there line. That's fair, headed for the corner. And then Michael Brantley into second base with a two-out double. There you go. Now that was a fastball, and he still couldn't throw it by him. And Michael, that was a great swing right there. He waited on it long enough and drilled a double down the line. That's the approach you want to try and have with this guy. So maybe the second time around, this lineup will make an adjustment. Michael did two out double, second hit for the Indians for Brantley, his 19th double on the year.
As Dribble Cabrera looks at a ball in the dirt. He popped up on the infield his first time up. It was a 3-2 pitch. And it looked like he was expecting a fastball, and he was way out in front and popped the changeup up on the infield. Two balls, no strikes. Indians trying to steal back a little of the momentum the Royals grabbed right out of the gate here tonight. And on the 2 0, Cabrera looks at a strike. Sending along some birthday wishes tonight to Kathleen Olowinski of Lorraine, who is 93, and Mary Humphreys of Medina is 90. Happy birthday, ladies. The 2 1. He loves it when you swing harder, doesn't he? Well, it's almost that, like playing you, you, right into his hand. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. You play into his hand. The bigger swing you have, the, the, the tougher it is to really wait back on this guy. This is the guy you almost try to get jammed by. Because for every fastball you see, he's gonna, you're going to see probably three off speed pitches. That's hit in the air. Right center field. Long run for Melky Cabrera, but he's there to grab it to end the inning. Three complete from Progressive Field. It's the Royals three and the Indians nothing. Fourth inning, and the Royals with a two-run homer in the first by Billy Butler, a solo shot from Alex Gordon in the second, have a three-to-nothing lead. Bottom third of the KC order due up here: Brian Pena, Chris Getz, and Alcides Escobar. Carlos Carrasco delivers outside for ball one. Pena bounced out into a fielder's choice his first time up. He socks this one to right field. Fukudome will cut it off. And Pena held to a long single. Well, the Royals have hit a number of balls. 
extremely hard already in this game. Watch off, look, look, off Carrasco. Let's check the uh, Time Warner cable pitch tracker. Everything that's been hit, he's been upstairs a lot today, and that was an off-speed pitch. Might have been a breaking ball. Might have been that slider that uh, he's going to have to concentrate on getting that down. Well, now, when he has his slider and it's working, it's got great bite to it, it's down. They've been uh, trying to be aggressive with him earlier. They have uh, one hit on the first pitch and three hits on pitch number two from Carrasco. He's got a really – and everything comes from locating his fastball. When he can locate it down, he has a good two-seamer as well. Gets tried to hold up, but he went too far, says the home plate umpire, Scott Berry. And the count one and one. Next pitch will be number 50 for Carlos Carrasco. Yeah, you think of that slider, and you think of a ball that it just goes straight down. Well, sometimes he's, it, to me, I know I'm not a pitching coach or anything like that, but sometimes it looks like he's been getting under, cutting under that slider, and it stays up and it spins. It doesn't have the bite or the tilt to it. And that's what he have to be. You look at that, the, the pitch count, 21 balls, 29 strikes. That's not good for Carlos. For basically any pitcher, you don't want to see that the mid mix. Three and one to Getz. And you try and work it. If you can't locate that fastball, that's what Lou's doing. He's trying to work him through it, but he's leaving a lot of pitches up, and the Kansas City Royals are swinging the bats pretty well right now. And a 3 1 pitch. Is hit in the hole. Pena will stop at second. And the Royals open the fourth with back to back singles. Hitters count. 3 with 3 1. Let's look at the locations on some of the hits that he's given up to this point. There's the high breaking ball. There's the high slider that got hit out. There's a, a fastball. Given up for there's another fastball for the for the home run. You can see. Boy, the pitch, that was a changeup, that one that let off this inning, Pena. So you can see the locations. That if he doesn't get that ball down, he's not going to be long for the ball game. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised to see a bunt here with three, see if Ned Yost wants to try and move along and try and get at least another one in the mid middle part of this game. They're in at the corners. Escobar squares, but he bunted through it. Bad attempt. This is a guy where your job, you got to get him down and try and get him over. This is a part of the game when you get an early lead that we talk about a lot. If you can add on in the middle part of that ball game, it certainly means a lot to your ball club. And it takes that home team a little farther out of it. I can see what he's trying to do here, and I don't blame him. I do the same thing. Escobar, not a guy that can drive the ball. And again, he squares, takes it outside, especially the way the top of his order has been swinging right. the bat. Exactly right. Because then you're going to have Gordon coming up who hit the ball hard. He's made two out, uh, made an out first time up flying it deep to center and then hit a home run. I mean, when you look at his first two hitters, they had Gordon with 54 ribbies, Cabrera with 57, or make it 55 and 57. And Butler now with 51 hitting in the three hole. 1-1 one, one pitch. Again, he squares. Gets it go. down. Good job. Carrasco will go to first. One away, and the sacrifice gets two men in a scoring position for KC. Yeah. Let's go back to the studios and check in with Al Pulaski. He's got the latest on the Angels and the Tigers. All right, Matt, let's go to Motown where Chad Wood's on the hill tonight for the Angels. Gets greeted by Brennan Bosch with his deep drive to right. Right fielder doesn't even move. It's a solo home run. It ties the game at one back in the first inning. They're still tied, and now in the fifth in Detroit. Back to you, Matt. All right, thanks, Al. Alex Gordon homer to right his last time up. First pitch fastball jumped right on it. The 1-0. -oh. 
Down low, two balls, no strikes. Okay, go ahead and put them on. They're going to go after that double play with Cabrera on deck, so it'll go as an intentional walk, his third walk of the game. Kansas City with the bases loaded and a chance to poke a hole in this one. So Carrasco is going to have to make a good pitch and try and get that ground ball double play. Melky Cabrera has hit into seven double plays on the year. Switch hitter. Singled and scored in the first fly to left in the second. We'll get an infield meeting now. At the mound. Orlando Cabrera doing a lot of the talking there to Carlos Carrasco. This will be his 60th pitch of the night coming up, and we've got activity starting in the Indians' bullpen yeah, now. They know it. They see that, you know, Carlos right now fighting himself more than anything, locating it, uh, any of his pitches. He has not been able to, to do that consistently. It's a bad feeling out there. And Cabrera drives one to deep right field and way back gone a grand slam. Melky Cabrera's 13th home run of the year. And he now has 61 runs driven in for the Royals who did exactly what you just talked about. They poked a hole in this one. Yes they did. It is now 7 to nothing Kansas City. That's the third home run given up by Carrasco and he is just flat out leaving the balls middle of the plate and that Kansas City team is teeing off. I mean, watch this fastball. He knows it. You got to throw a strike and get ahead. Another 92 mile an hour fastball. Look at him. He knew he got it. Boom. That's just like batting practice right there. For Cabrera, his uh, 13th home run. All over the head of Billy Butler, and then Carrasco's been ejected by Scott Barry. And now Lou Marson. Intervening with Butler. The Royals dugout emptying out onto the field. Jack Hanahan also coming in to tell Butler to ease up. Can certainly understand Butler's sensitivity there. That ball sailing over his head right after a grand slam was hit. But doesn't make any difference. Carlos Carrasco has been tossed. That was bad on Carrasco's part. The umpires quickly restoring order, telling the Royals to get back into the dugout. In the meantime, we'll get a new pitcher. And when you give up a grand slam and you throw the next pitch right at a guy's head, you know what? you're going to get your own guys hurt. Uh, you know what? That. Not at the coconut. I'm sorry. That's just not right on Carrasco's part. You no. want to move their feet. That's fine. You want to go from the armpits down below. That's fine. That That's not major league right there going at somebody's head. I'm sorry. He, he got rocked around. It was his fault. He couldn't control it. But you don't start throwing at people's heads. And that's going to do it for him. And that was uh, that was his worst start of the year as far as I'm concerned. He certainly didn't have it tonight. And the Royals have jumped all over the Indians. They lead it 7 0. We've got a timeout here at Progressive Field.
Verizon 4G LTE rule the air on the most advanced 4G network in the world. The Indians go to Chad Durbin with the Royals leading it 7 to nothing. Durbin on for the 38th time this year. And he'll be facing Billy Butler, who had a pitch sail over his head that led to the ejection immediately of Carlos Carrasco. We gave up three long balls, and none of them were cheapies. You know, and Butler got him back in the first inning, a two-run shot. He was the third hitter of the game. And then you're going to see Gordon get him. That was with two outs in the second inning. And then Cabrera gets a fastball. And... Carlos Carrasco didn't have anything couldn't locate anything and then after that grand slam which was the first grand slam allowed this year there's a pitch up at the head that is not right I, I I can see why Butler is upset man that's tough to get out of that's that is not right boy you don't go what anybody said that's your livelihood I he's mean, ejected he, from the game and you know what take that frustration in because that's that's not right if he was upset at Cabrera for posing at the plate then he should have been mad at Cabrera, not Billy Well, Butler. you don't go at anybody. You don't throw at anybody's head. How would you like to be the hitter up there and see somebody when you, I mean, he hit him for a home run in the first inning. That's fine. Up the middle. Cabrera from the outfield grass able to throw out Butler two down. No, you're right, though. I mean. You one go thing, up in that a, batter's box and watch somebody you throw at your head see how happy you, you are. You have a beef with somebody. That's one thing, but. There's better ways to you, deal with it than throwing right at somebody's squash. You want to go inside. You want to dr drill somebody. Go ahead, but do it from the waist down. You know, that, a hitter would take that. He'd drop his bat. He'd go to first base. That's all part of the game. Not at the head, Dan. That's a no-no. He's got every right to be upset. That was not. Uh, that was bad. Especially what we've already seen, you know, this year and the last couple of years with regards to concussions. What happens if he would have hit him in the head? <laughs> It's crazy. Two balls and a strike. Checked his swing. They'll appeal. He didn't go. Three and one for Eric Hosmer, who has doubled and walked tonight. Right back to the screen, full count. Driven down the left field line. Kearns over. Makes the catch. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. It's Kansas City 7, Cleveland nothing.
Down seven to nothing. They do have a single and a double so far here tonight, but he's having a tough time well, generating anything. That the, the the way you're going to do it, you don't try and hit him harder. Like I said, with this guy, you try and get jammed off of. Second time through, Bradley had a nice approach. Let let him try and throw the fastball by. He's not going to do it. You're going to see a lot of off-speed pitches, and there's right now they just got to try and get on the board. Seven runs. They've only scored seven runs on this whole road trip, so you can't think that you're going to have to come back and try and get it in one inning. You're just going to have to piece together, a, you know, a couple of innings and just keep stroking away. Everybody try and get on base. Travis Hafner in a good count, 2-0. Takes a strike. And a one hopper to third. And they throw him out with that shift on. Mustak is staying over there all by himself on the left side of the infield, but he was in the right, right spot. Right at him. Yes, indeed. That was uh, played perfectly. Well, you don't want to miss out on your chance for you and a guest to uh, watch a game with Mike and Sharon Hargrove from the uh, Hargrove Suite here at Progressive Field. Tickets are only $20, and the five uh, winners will be drawn. They stop by the Indians Charities table behind Section 153 at any home game. Purchase your raffle tickets. Carlos Santana flied to left his first time up. One on one to count. Off the dish, it's two and one. And a long fly ball deep to left. And off the wall. Gordon has a great arm. He's going to throw it. And the cutoff man, not in time. Santana gets in there safely. Gordon was trying to tie the franchise record for assists right there. Well, that's, he, he did exactly what he had to do. He may have wanted to throw it all the way there. But what he did, he kept it down enough. So that relay or cutoff man there was able to turn and spin and throw, and they made it awfully close at second base. He played it nicely off the wall, this not being his home park. Look at that one hopper right there. It doesn't get any quicker. That's a really nice relay, even though it's a shorter throw from left field. Look at Santana does come down and ooh, barely got that hand in there. You see how it was sticking up? So it'll go as a double. This is a Royals outfield with 37 assists. They can Leads throw. all of Major League Baseball. The second place team, the closest ones to them, the Dodgers have 27 assists. The Do Yeah, I think uh, in uh, the league, I think Baltimore is second in this league. But every one of these outfielders can throw. And we've witnessed it because uh, remember Cabrera threw a guy out at home plate when we were out there. And this guy has done a great job after he was a third baseman. Milky's done a, got a nice arm from center, and this guy, he leads all of baseball when you go back about three or four years. They've thrown 19 out at the plate alone. That's hard to do now. You, Gripes, we talk about it all the time. You don't see many outfielders that can throw, let alone be accurate and, and have a good arm. Runner at second with one out here in the fourth. Five down seven. Francis with the one two. And he strikes out Cabrera. Third K for Francis two down here in the fourth. The Browns are back in so is the Dr. Charles Drew blood drive. Tomorrow from 8 to 6 at the Berea Rec Center on Front Street you can donate blood to help save a life. Plus you'll receive a free t-shirt. And two tickets to the Packers-Browns game on August 13th. For more information, visit clevelandbrowns.com. Kosuke Fukudome is second at bat as an Indian. Went down swinging his first time up. Looks at ball one.
Takes a strike in addition to the two batting titles. That he won while playing in Japan. Fukudome also. Won four gold gloves. He was MVP of the. League in 2006. Tap foul. Fukudome, an all star with the Cubs in 08. Indian sending Abner Abreu. An outfielder and right handed pitcher Carlton Smith to Chicago in exchange for the outfielder. The one two. And a ground ball right at the second baseman gets. That'll end the inning. Four complete. The Royals seven and the Indians nothing. United, proud to fly the Cleveland Indians. And by Panini's. Go to paninisgrill.com for their new food and drink menu and a location near you. All right, back here at Progressive Field. Indians on the short end of a 7-0 score. Chad Durbin got the last two outs in the fourth inning. On to try and eat up a couple innings out of the bullpen. Jeff Francoeur, Mike Moustakis, and Brian Pena due for Kansas City. Oh boy, he launches one to deep left. That's going to be off the wall. Played nicely there by Kearns, and the throw is not in time. Bouncing in. Cabrera couldn't hang on to it. Frank Core with a double. I'll tell you what, these guys are swinging the lumber tonight. They're just taking some hacks. Eight hits for Kansas City. They're teeing it up, and they are letting it fly. And, I mean, they've seen some pitches down the middle of the plate, and they are getting after it. This ball high off the wall. Kearns plays it. Frank Core gets into second base. Five of their eight hits have been for extra yeah, bases. 29th double of the year. They have uh, two doubles now. Yeah, three homers. Scoreboard update brought to you by your Northern Ohio Ford dealers and the all new 2012 Ford Focus. Ford, drive one. Mike Moustakis 0 for 2 tonight. Well, it's, it's he and Escobar, the, the only two that don't have a hit yet. It's only the fifth inning.
There have not been a lot of games this year where the Indians have trailed like this early. You know, mid part of the game. No, they haven't been had many games where your starter gets knocked out right. like that. Well, ejected. Well, and knocked out. Yeah. <laughs> Both <laughs> in one in one sentence. I'll tell you what you do too with the way that Carlos Carrasco went about it. You got these guys on point for the rest of the series now. Mm -hmm. For for the, how he tried to take care of that situation. Mustakis is out looking. One down here in the fifth. There you go. A little fastball. He doesn't pull the trigger on, so he goes down for the second time tonight. That ball had a little comeback to it. Usually he tries to throw that cutter in there to the left handers, but that one had a little sink to it. Brian Pena singled and scored his last time up, cuts and misses. A little bit too high, one and one. Happy birthday wishes going out tonight to Gary Nicholson in Painesville, Ohio. Also, Samantha Leach in Tiffin, Ohio, celebrating her 22nd birthday. And also, happy birthday wishes to one of our own at Sports Time Ohio, Steve Warren, celebrating his birthday. Except I think there's something wrong with his calendar because he keeps saying it's his 40th birthday, but I think it was his 40th birthday last year and the year before, too. So And about 12 years before that. <laughs> Frank Coor, the runner at second base with one down here in the fifth. And Pena... Backs away from a pitch that didn't miss the inside corner by much. Durbin thought he had it nailed for a strikeout. That's just a little bit outside. Full count. Payoff pitch. Now he chases one and punches yeah, it did. in the air. You know, he had a, a pace at bat up until he got to three and two, and then he didn't want to take the walk, and he helped out Chad Durbin, but he gets the out. Let's go back to the studios once again, see what Al has from Detroit. Go, Matt. The Angels keep going up by a run. The Tigers keep coming back up two to one. Here were the Angels until Ramon Santiago launches this one to right center. Narrowly misses a home run. Instead, it's a double. It scores Avila from first. Once again, this game is knotted. This time at two, sixth inning in Detroit. Back to you, Matt. Okay, thanks, Al. Chris Getz singled and scored his last time up. Looks at ball one. Boston is in Chicago. The Indians will head to Boston to open a four-game series Monday. Yeah, what's Boston have a short little three-game series, a weekend home. series, and they go back home. Just a bit outside, two and one. Three balls and a strike. And Durbin walks gets two on two out. Alcides Escobar the number nine hitter. 
Let's 0 finish. for 1 with a sacrifice bunt. Our birthday wishes. Janice Cable of Denison is turning 80. Janice, happy birthday. Vera Geschke of Broadview Heights is also 80. And Albert and Helen Charnsky of Fairlawn celebrating their 67th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. The pitch to Escobar, and he takes it for a strike. Broke his bat. It's going to fall. Brantley charging, can't get to it. Runner comes home to score to make it 8 to nothing. And Getz goes to third. So Alcides Escobar with his 32nd RBI on the year. Frank Coor coming home after the leadoff double. And the Royals just keep piling it on. Well, it breaks his bat. Made a good pitch. And off the end of the bat, we heard it break. And it's just going to fall in. Two outs. Everybody's running. Frank Coor scores. Gets to third. So it's two out single. Eight zip. KC. Alex Gordon looks at a ball down low. He was intentionally walked his last time up, and then Melky Cabrera stepped up and hit a grand slam. Durbin has thrown 28 pitches, 14 balls, 14 strikes. And it's 3 and 0 to Alex Gordon. They're loaded. For guess who? Loaded again. The last time they were loaded, Melky Cabrera did this. And he stood and admired it for a long time. Yeah, he did. Well, he's the one that should have been in trouble. Carrasco tried to take it out on Butler, which was the wrong thing to do. Butler to ease up. You know, so yeah. that, that cost him the ball game. That's the guy he should be mad at is this one right here. But he's got another opportunity. He has two grand slams. Both of them have come into this ballpark. His other one came here July 6, 2006 against Paul Bird. So for whatever reason, he likes it here with the bases loaded. Up and in. That's a cutter up under the chin. There you go. Nothing wrong with that one. You got to lose that toe hold. That's what you get for posing. That's right there. That's a purpose pitch. That's fine. Yeah, look out all you wanted. You looked when you hit the home run. There you go. Hit off the end of the bat. Left fielder Austin Kearns is there. Inning over. Royals leave him loaded. But they tack on another run. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Eight zip KC.
up here. Austin Kearns, Jack Hanahan, and Lou Marson. Low and away. Two balls, no strikes. That'll find the seats down the right side. Send along a uh, happy 83rd birthday to Rabbi Israel Paliaf of Highland Park, New Jersey. Rabbi, happy 83rd. All the way in Jersey, huh? Yes, sir. His son Yank is here. 2 1 pitch. Three balls and a strike. Kearns with a liner to first right at Hosmer one away. Our game recap brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Billy Butler a two run homer in the first. Alex Gordon a solo blast in the second. And then in the fourth the grand slam by Melky Cabrera. Find out about more than 30 Toyota offers available now at buyatoyota.com. Jack Hanahan takes a look at the ball down low. Round ball to short. Escobar takes care of that two down. Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Lou Marson called out on strikes his first time up. And a weak tapper to second. Indians go one, two, three. And we go to the sixth, all Kansas City tonight. Five dollar discount coupons for the Subway Extreme Fan Zone. It's the place to be for a chance to win Subway gift cards, Indians fun money, and you'll get ready uh, great discounts on your next Subway purchase. Subway, where winners eat. Billy Butler, Eric Hosmer, Jeff Francoeur for the Royals here in the sixth inning. Chad Durbin and inning and two thirds of relief so far. Some activity in the tribe pen as we speak. And it's Frank Herman who is up and getting loose. Durbin is 
Thrown 34 pitches in his inning in two thirds. 17 balls, 17 strikes. So he's had a little trouble finding the consistency that he's looking for. Butler, a two run homer in the first, since then a couple of ground ball outs. In their last 20 meetings, the Indians had won 15 times against Kansas City. And the Tribe had averaged seven runs a game. Yeah, earlier in the year. Remember, they scored 19 against Kansas City earlier this year. Yeah, they had a, was a 19-1 to game. The 1-2 pitch. Uh, that was one of those games, too. They had a 10-run inning. And you and I talked about the Indians offensively early in the year when they were rolling. It seemed like they would have one big inning every game. Now, I'm not saying it would be that big of an inning. But they get, they'd get a three spot, a four spot. One inning every game, they'd get four and five hits bunched together, maybe more. They haven't been able to do that for quite some time, though. That was the second time of the year that they put 10, 10 runs on the board. They did it in the fourth inning against Seattle earlier in the year, if you remember, when we were out there. But this is right now the talk of uh, around baseball. This kid, Eric Cosmer, who can not only hit, but he can play some first base. And they are really high on him along with other people around baseball. Beautiful evening in downtown Cleveland as you look out at Lake Erie. It's that blimp shot. Great shots from up there, huh? Yes, indeed. Breaking ball fouled back by Frank Corr. He doubled and scored in the fifth. One and one to count. Kansas City coming into tonight's game. Only one team in baseball had fewer road wins than the Royals. And that is Baltimore, who was 15 and 32 on the road this year. Royals 16 and 32 away from Kauffman Stadium. But they've made themselves right at home here this evening. High fly ball right field. Fukudome puts it away and the Royals go one two three for the first time tonight.
sixth inning for the tribe. Michael Brentley is Drupal Cabrera and Travis Hafner. And Jeff Francis with a first pitch strike. There's that big slow now, hook. This has certainly been a different guy that faced the Indians in his first time around. Well, 50 out of 75 pitches have been strikes. So he's been ahead of a lot of hitters. And then he's gotten them to, to either chase or he's had him trying to hit the ball 500 feet and kind of playing right into his hand. You know, this guy has lost his last five decisions. He had a couple of no decisions mixed in there. So his last seven starts, he's, he hasn't won. The last time he won was June 10th. Brantley got a hanger, but it doesn't go very deep. Frank Corey able to run it down in right field. Well, let's go back to the studios once again. Al Pulaski has the latest on that game in Detroit. Well, Matt, the Tigers have taken a big lead now. They've scored four runs here in the sixth inning, highlighted by this triple off Carlos Guillen's bat. It's now 6-2. to two. Tigers still batting the sixth inning. Two on with two out as Detroit leads it now by four. Back to you, Matt. Okay, thanks, Al. Rick, you talked about him having a winless streak going right. He didn't get his first win of the year until May 20th. And that's a long time to go as a starter to start the season without tasting victory. That's Dribble Cabrera with a one-out single to right field. Let's go uh, and check the AT&T trivia question and see what we have for the answer tonight. Royals all-time leader in wins and innings pitch. Is that our old friend Paul Splitorf? As my guess. You betcha. 166 Just victories. passed away earlier this year. What a, what a oh, nice yeah. gentleman, a true, true guy he was. He was an original Kansas City Royal, man. He was, uh, he was very good, a terrific person. And they wear the patch in honor of Split. Travis Hafner, 0 for 2 tonight. Hafner is grounded to first and grounded to third. Bouncing ball towards the second baseman. Getz goes to Escobar for one. The return throw in time. It's an inning ending double play. We'll go to the seventh. Eight nothing Kansas City.
sure to stop out at Rally Alley. Bolivar Street over there behind the Time Warner Cable Bleachers will turn into a big festival. They've got food, they've got drink, live entertainment, including KISS FM's DJ eBay will be there. And admission out there is free. Also on Sunday, we've got Key Bank Kids Fun Day going on. All of the usual awesome games out there. But also SpongeBob and Dora the Explorer will be here. And then the kids can stay to move it around the bases. Sponsored by the Cleveland Clinic after the game. For tickets, log on Indians.com. You can get them as low as $8. There isn't a better deal out there. Matt Rick will send it back up to you guys. All right. Thanks, Katie. Frank Herman into the ball game now for the Indians. After Chad Durbin went two in the third innings, allowing one run on two hits. Now Frank Herman will be facing hitters six, seven, and eight in the KC lineup. Mike Mustakis to lead it off. Cuts and misses. Mustakis 0 for 3. Couple of strikeouts tonight. Back out of play. Three game weekend series between the Indians and the Royals continues tomorrow night. Another 7 o'clock game. We'll have it for you on Channel 3 tomorrow night. Then we'll wrap up things on Sunday with a 1 o'clock game on STO. Tomorrow's matchup features Justin Masterson against Felipe Polino. And then uh, we head to two places we haven't been yet this year Boston and Texas. Two best offenses in the league await the Indians on this road trip. There's Bat. He'll be going tomorrow night looking for his ninth win. Carlos Carrasco was seeking his ninth here this evening. But he was knocked out. Well, actually ejected, but. Melky Cabrera effectively knocked him out with that grand slam in the fourth that made it seven to nothing. Well, Mustakis has his first hit tonight. And that's the tenth for Kansas City. Pena shoots it out of play. Up high, one ball, one strike. Slicing, that'll find the seats. Look down at this card that with Mustakas with the base hit, everybody in the lineup has a hit now. The only one with two is Cabrera. Uh, getting to double figures and hits, usually pretty good. Indicator that you're going to win the game. When the Indians have 10 hits or more this year, they're 29 and 7. But they've now gone seven straight games without 10 hits, which is 
equal to the longest current streak. Not getting the double digits and hits. But Kansas City now, they punched out double digits hits in eight of their last ten games. Popped them up foul. Marson can't see it. Hanahan does. And he's got it. One away. Browns training camp daily returns tomorrow night after Indians baseball. Andre Knott, Mary Kay Cabot, Doug Deacon, Tony Grossi, Vic Carucci, and Coach Sam will get you up to date on the flurry of activity in Berea. Brown, Browns training camp daily starting tomorrow night after Indians Royals right here on STO. One on one out for Chris Getz. Popped him up. Hanahan again. Two down. And that'll bring Alcides Escobar to the dish. He had an RBI single his last time up in the fifth. Little shot off the end of the bat, broke his bat, but it dropped into center field to get the eighth run of this game home for Kansas City. A little bit outside one on one. Looks like Roy Halliday is doing his thing over in the National League. Phillies taking on the Pirates tonight. It's a route there, wasn't it? It was eight nothing eight the nothing. last time I saw it. He's given up just one hit there in the sixth or seventh inning, I do believe. In that game, Pirates started the night a game and a half and back of front running Milwaukee, tied with St. Louis for second place. Cincinnati's fallen six and a half games yes. out now. Missed inside. Phillies lead Atlanta by five games in the NL East. Giants lead Arizona by four games in the NL West. Fouled back. San Francisco, of course, making the big deal to acquire Carlos Beltran. With their pitching and their experience, they're going to be tough they're gonna to be, beat. Yes, they're going to be tough to catch, is right. You would think so. Now the 2 2. Hammer deep to left field. And high off the wall. Heading to third is Moustakis. He'll get in there safely. No throw to second. Looked like Cabrera might have had a play, but he was double clutch, just wasn't sure. And held on to the ball. So Escobar with a double. Keeps the inning alive. His second hit tonight. I wonder what the heck es Escobar was doing. He should have been in at second base easily. Normally you're you're round and playing from that guy from home play. That's a, not a good pitch by Herman. Watch this ball go off the wall, and he hits his cutoff, man. You're thinking, okay, don't let him score. You get in line for home plate. He looks at second, and he expects him to be a lot farther along than he was. So with two down, Alex Gordon to the plate. So six of their 11 hits have been extra base hits. Three doubles, three dingers. Swung on and missed. It's one on one.
There are the Royals runners. Moustakas at third, Escobar at second. Gordon looks at a ball in off the plate, three and one. Could this happen? Where if they walk Gordon and Cabrera would come up again? Be his third trip to the plate with the bases loaded. Instead, Gordon lines one into the gap. It'll go to the fence. Two more are in. Gordon's in the second base with a double. He now has three runs batted in in the ball game, and the Royals lead it ten to nothing. Yeah, that one a three-one count, and he didn't. He just took exactly what Herman gave him, and he stayed on it. And I mean, hit a bullet. He went to left field and left center. It was a little two-seamer. He didn't try to pull it. He didn't get a uh, little greedy to try and hit a home run. He just stayed on it and hit a line shot into the gap. It rolls to the wall. Scores Moustakis, Escobar. And as you mentioned, his uh, second hit, his third ribby, and the fourth double for the Royals. And they have put on a hitting clinic tonight. Melky Cabrera. Looks at a ball outside. Fouled out of play, one and one. That ball already got the umpire. I think, I, it, think it I, I think I think it I don't even think Marson got leather on it. Watch it just deflected it is what look at oh. he caught it on his arm and in his hip. Well you saw where Lou was set up so he missed his target by quite a bit. He just the edge of that glove just deflected that ball right into the, uh, to Scott Barry's arm. He almost he did he caught it with his arm and his uh, his hip. Three and one to count. This will be the 30th pitch of the inning for Frank Herman. And a count is three and two. Boy, doesn't that show you the, the times that the Royals have been in hitters counts the way they've swung the bat. They have had opportunities all night. They've had some great pitches to swing at and they've done a lot of damage. Line drive right field Fukudome coming in makes the hip high catch to end the inning. Two runs on three hits Royals leave a man but they lead it 10 to nothing as we reach the Cleveland Clinic seventh inning stretch. Indians fans time to get up and move it.
Levin Furniture, home of Sealy's Posturepedic Mattress, made in Northeast Ohio. And by your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealers. It's time to join the Hyundai movement. Ten nothing, Kansas City. Bottom of the seventh inning, and Jeff Francis delivers ball one to Carlos Santana, one for two with a double. Hit in the air to center field. Melky Cabrera moving over into right center to grab it. One away. All right, our Miller Taste Greatness moment. On this date in 2000, Manny Ramirez against the Baltimore Orioles with a pair of homers and six runs batted in. And that resulted in a 14 to 3. Indians win over the birds that and Manny's final season as an Indian. A little bit too high. Three balls, no strikes. One out walk to Cabrera will bring up Kosuke Fukudome. Well, that was uh, Jeff Francis's first walk tonight. I told you he's got very good control. Doesn't give up many, but that was a four pitch walk to Cabrera. Bouncing ball foul, first base side, Fukudome. A strikeout and a ground out so far here tonight. And a big curve in for a strike. Fukudome down on the count 0 and 2. Now the one two pitch. And a ground ball in the hole. Tracked down by Getz. He'll go to first for the out two down. Orlando Cabrera moves into scoring position. And let's go back to the studios once again for an in game update with Al Pulaski. Hey man, Red Sox and White Sox tonight in Chicago. The only run of the game comes right here. Jared Saltolamaki, a solo homer to right. His ninth of the season came in the third inning. It's 1 0 Boston, fifth inning now at U.S. Cellular Field. Back to you, Matt. All right, thanks, Al. Indians Media Relations Director Bart Swain telling us that Alex White will begin his rehab stint tomorrow at Double A Akron. He's going to work out of the bullpen. I know he's been anxious to get back 
into a game and try to work his way back. Anytime you make the big leagues, and he, you know, he only pitched in three games, and you go on the deal, you get that taste of the big leagues, and you're out. Yes, you do want to come back. Are you kidding me? You hate to sit and watch. I mean, being a pitcher, it's one thing because you're used to watching a few games. When you're in every day and you get an opportunity, you want to get out there and play. There are various uh, reports right now on the internet that say the Philadelphia Phillies are very close to acquiring Hunter Pence from the Houston Astros. But those same reports also say that the Atlanta Braves could be the biggest threat to the Phillies in landing the much sought after outfielder from Houston. And it would have, you would think the Braves are probably more desperate to get him than the Phillies. So they might be willing to up the ante. You know, if you're, if you're Houston, you play one against the other and try to take it right up to the deadline maybe. Well, you're right because you have until Sunday at what, 4 o'clock? Yeah. 4 p.m., yeah, that's the deadline. But then after that, you the waiver, waiver wire. Yeah. I mean, after July 31st at 4 o'clock, then whoever or whatever you want to make a trade, that, that guy will have to clear waivers and go through both leagues before you can – Make a deal. And at that point in time, other teams may block that trade, knowing that he could come to your ball club. That has happened in the past. The one, two. Kearns is out looking. And that ends the seventh. Eight or ten nothing, Kansas City, as we go to the eighth. Produced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Fans, don't forget you can log on to Panini'sGrill.com for their new food and drink menu and a location near you. Billy Butler one for four with a two run homer in the first. Driven down the right side out of play.
The 0-2 to Butler pushed him back a little bit. Popped him up foul and this will find the seats. Fastball hit hard deep right field. Fukudome back looking up and it's gone. Billy Butler. His home run binge continues his second of the night. He's hit homers in four straight games. It's 11 to nothing Kansas City. And uh, we told you I mean he, he just hits home runs byproducts of good at bats. That was a line drive. That ball just carried on out. I'm sure when we see it it's going to be another pitch up in the strike zone. By Indians pitching but he drove that ball the other way. He gets the Royals fourth home run and watch this ball. I mean you, you can't put it on a tee any better and he just stayed on it and. Right over off the top of that. Railing up there into the seats. So it is 11 nothing Kansas City. Second home run of the game by Butler. And the 2 0 sails high and wide. Outside corner, nailed it, three and one. Mosmer doubled in the first, walked in the third. He's flied out, lined out since then. That's fouled away. Left hander Rafael Perez just now getting loose. Bouncing ball to short as Dribble Cabrera flips it over. One away. Our box score brought to you by your Northern Ohio Hyundai dealers introducing the Hyundai Assurance trade in value guarantee. Well, everybody has been invited to that party. And there are some heavy duty numbers up top. Slowly chopped towards third. Only play barehand grab by Hanahan. He pulled Santana off the bag. And Frank Coor safe at first with an infield single. Yeah, he, he made a nice try and a nice attempt to barehand it. He just said the, he couldn't make an accurate throw. It was a do or die play. You see where he's playing? Playing back, he's not going to bunt. And he just tops this ball. Hanahan made a nice play, but it just brings Santana off the base. So it'll go as an infield single. One on one out for Mike Mustakas, who singled and scored in the seventh. And that slice foul the other way. You talked about Billy Butler not really being a. A quote unquote home run hitter it's the fifth. Multi homer game of his career and the last time he did it was 09. So. But yeah and you don't expect it to, you know. You know he's going to hit his home runs but that's uh, you don't double up in a game. But as you mentioned he's hit in four straight games and. They come in bunches when you're putting yeah. uh, together quality at bats. Hit to right field. Fukudome has that. Two down. Back to first. Is Frank Coor and it brings up Brian Pena. 
Pena one for four tonight. He singled and scored back in the fourth inning. Tigers handing it to L.A. tonight, eight to two. One night after the Angels hung a 12 spot on the Tigers, beating them 12-7 last night. That's hit toward the gap in left center, and it's going to split them, and it's going to go to the wall. In the third is Frank Hoare. He'll be waved home as Dribble Cabrera's throw not in time. 12 to nothing, Kansas City. As Brian Pena has his second hit of the night. His 10th double is 22nd RBI. Just another double. That's five now. And I, I mean, you hear me keep talking about location, but if you watch, and I mean, if we could put all the hits together today, you would see some of the locations on these pitches, and they are getting some good ones to hit. And they're not missing them. 15 hits now for the Royals and 12 runs. This will already be the 50th pitch for Frank Herman. And he just came in last inning. <laughs> 12 runs on 15 hits for Kansas City tonight. And a little chopper towards second. Orlando Cabrera off balance throw to get him. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. A dozen for the Royals. Bottom of the eighth inning here at Progressive Field. Jack Hanahan, Lou Marson, and Michael Brantley for the try. Jeff Francis. His 100th pitch of the night. He is in there for a strike. 64% strikes for the left-hander. And it's 0-2. Hanahan has popped up, grounded out tonight. He's had about a dozen. That's 13 0 2 one two counts, so... He's pitching ahead. That guy, like, when pitch he ahead, pitches like the that, zone. that's where he can go to nibbling, and he gets guys to swing at his pitch. A 
Out of play. Royals just now getting activity in their bullpen. The appeal he did not go. And the one two pitch. Swung on and missed. Fifth strikeout for Francis. One down here in the eighth. The gathering place supports, educates, and empowers individuals and families who have been touched by cancer. Every time the Indians homer, Rick and I are each donating $5 to the gathering place, and Great Clips is chipping in 50 bucks per dinger. Our total so far this year, over $5,400. And sixty dollars for more inf for more information. Visit touchbycancer.org. Great needs, great deeds, great clips. Lou Marson, 0 for two, down on the count, 0 and two. Missed outside with it. And Marson strikes out a half dozen K's for Francis. 70 strikeouts now on the year for the Royals left hander. Now one thing Francis doesn't do much of is walk hitters. So you're talking about getting ahead in the count. He's either going to make you hit your way on. But he's only walked 26 batters. And 134 yeah, innings. One of the best you know walks per nine innings guy in the yeah. league. I mean Josh Tomlin is uh, the best. But this is the fourth time this year he has struck out six guys. This is a season high. And he's done it now for the fourth time tonight. Two balls and a strike for Brantley, who doubled in the third, one for three on the night. Two balls, two strikes. And Michael stays alive as he draws that right back into the seats. The 2 2. Lifted in the air, center field. Routine for Cabrera. And the Indians go 1 2 3. We go to the ninth. 12 0, Kansas City.
Aerial coverage tonight provided by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Well, ninth inning and Rafael Perez will come on to work now for the Indians. Forty sixth appearance for the Indians left hander this year. Defensively now for the Indians Jason Kipnis comes into second base and Orlando Cabrera slides over to short. And I'll bring up LCD's Escobar, Alex Gordon, and Melky Cabrera for KC here in the ninth. Escobar, two for three on the night. Double, a single, an RBI, and a sacrifice bunt. Yeah, that sacrifice bunt came back. <clears throat> Excuse me in the fourth inning when they already had a three nothing lead and they were just trying to add on a little bit and then after the intentional walk it was the grand slam and that's what uh, did in Carrasco just trying to add on. Yeah. They put up a four spot in the fourth. Melky Cabrera jumped on a first pitch fastball on the inside part of the plate and hit it out. And the route was on. And they haven't let up. They added one in the fifth. Two in the seventh, two in the eighth. We knew the Royals had swing the bats. They came in fourth in the American League in batting average. But they came in second to last in ERA. And yet Jeff Francis has spun a four hit shutout. Slice down the right field line. Fair ball. Fukudome digs it out of the corner. But not before Escobar is in to second base. With his third hit of the night and his second double. So for Escobar it's his third three hit game of the year. And he's in the scoring position immediately for Alex Gordon, who's also had a big night with a two run double, a solo homer. He's also walked twice and scored two runs. Perez delivers and Gordon breaks his bat fouled up the first base side. Malice Gordon now has pushed his batting average up over 300 on the season. The 1 1. A little bit low. Indians started the night a game and a half and back in Detroit, but the Tigers have already played three more games than the Indians. And a lot of that has to do with the rainouts we've had. 2 1 pitch sliced foul. 
Well, that rain out uh, for the White Sox that came over the weekend, they rescheduled that game for, what is it, September 20th. It's a day-night uh, doubleheader when they return back to Cleveland. That'll be a 105 game. And then the regularly scheduled game will be at 705. And the day before on September 19th, which was originally an off day, that date has been filled up by the rain out with the Mariners from earlier in the year. It's a 4 5 game. Kipnis bobbled it, throws to first, still gets him. One down, Escobar goes to third. They'll bring up Melky Cabrera. Two for five with a grand slam tonight. Good by him that time. A little foul tip. 0 and 1. And a chopper. Foul. Hanahan. Look at this throw. Right on the money. <laughs> It was a foul ball, but he turned and whirled and threw off balance from foul territory and hit Santana on the money at first base. Well, that's why you just never take for granted what that play is going to be called. If you went in doubt, you go ahead and make the play. It wasn't dandy. <laughs> Runner at third, one out, and the 0-2 pitch from Rafael Perez. Down and in. Chopper to third. This will keep the runner at third. And Hanahan takes care of Cabrera two away. And it will bring up Billy Butler. We'll have the Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care post game show coming up. Conrad's home of the lowest everyday tire price guarantee. Bounce to short. Orlando Cabrera with the long throw gets his man. And we'll go to the last of the night. 12 0 Kansas City.
Bottom of the ninth here in Cleveland. Jeff Francis went eight shutout innings, giving up just four hits. He walked one, struck out six. And he gives way to right-hander Blake Wood, who comes on to work the ninth. For the Indians, it'll be Jason Kipnis, Travis Hafner, and Carlos Santana. Well, this is uh, definitely the best game. He did throw go seven and two thirds in against St. Louis back on May 20th. Gave up six hits, did not allow a run in that ball game. But he went eight innings today on four hits. So this is his best outing of the year. So it's up to Blake Wood now. And the Indians again on this homestand, their problem has been scoring runs. They still have had seven. Now we're talking about 19 scoreless innings now. 19 scoreless innings. Are, they're looking at getting shut out for the 11th time this year. Second time on this homestand. And the last time the Indians scored was a Matt Laporta home run in the seventh inning. In game two of the three game series against the Angels. And that was the only run they scored in that game. Jason Kipnis first at bat of the ball game. High and wide. Three balls, no strikes. Brian Pena. Wants a strike from Wood. And he walked Kipnis on four pitches. Oh, I beg your pardon on that. Uh, that note on the. Indians offensive woes. They've had one run one run in their last 19 innings. They had the. Uh, the yeah the wild pitch that scored the pitch. first. Yeah. In the no hit game. Travis Hafner 0 for 3. Blake Wood delivers. And it's one on one to Hafner. Carlos Santana waiting on deck. The one one to Prox swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes. Detroit continues to beat up on the Angels. The Tigers with a 12 2 lead at Comerica Park. So they'll look to move to two and a half games in front of the Indians. Red Sox, White Sox tied at one in the seventh in Chicago. Hafner strikes out, one away.
Carlos Santana, one for three. He doubled back in the fourth inning. He's fly to left and also fly to center. Blake Wood, the 0 1. Santana with a one hop smash to second, gets, knocks it down, takes the sure out at first, two away. And it will bring up Orlando Cabrera. Orlando Cabrera one for two. He is singled, struck out, and also walked tonight. The 1 0 pitch back over the mound behind the bag and off the glove of Getz. Kipnis stops at third. Just a seeing eye single for Orlando Cabrera. Yeah, once it gets over is uh, the outstretched hands of Wood. If he knocks it down, you see, he just couldn't get enough on it. And then Getz would have had to make a perfect pick and throw. To get Cabrera, he does not. So that'll be an infield single. Keep the inning going. Kosuke Fukudome, 0 for 3 in his Indians debut. Indians down 12 to nothing here in the bottom of the ninth. And a weak ground ball to second will end the game. So the Royals come into town and lay a whipping on the tribe. They win by a final score of 12 to nothing in the series opener. Winning pitcher is Jeff Francis. Just his fourth win on the year. He's 4 and 11. Loser is Carlos Carrasco. He drops to 8 and 9. With the win, KC is 45 and 61. With the loss, the Indians dropped to within a game of 500. 52 and 51 now on the season. And some regrouping to do for the Wahoos. Time now for our play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. Thanks for making Key Bank the number one bank in Northeast Ohio. Well, let's go back to the fourth inning, and this was certainly, they were down 3 0. They intentionally walked the bases loaded, a fastball middle in, and he turned on it and gave him a four spot with one swing of the bat. His second career grand slam, Carrasco, very upset after that, was ejected to the next hitter. But his second career grand slam, both of them in this ballpark. That's going to be our key bank, key play of the game. Twelve zip.